Praise God, Reverend Dr. Catherine Mothers from the Pastor Catherine Mothers Show. And this is the month of September. And we know the month of September is Children's Children Day is recognized on various days in many places around the world. It celebrates children globally. Children's Day was begun on the second Sunday of June in 1856 by Reverend Dr. Charles Leonard pastor of the Universalist Church of the Redeemer for Chelsea, Massachusetts. Dr. Leonard held a special service dedication to and for the children. Dr. Leonard named the day Rose Day, though it was later named Flower Sunday and then Children's Day. Well, International Children's Day is June 1st, which has passed, and Universal Children's Day is November 20th. So when we put them both together, we celebrate Children's Day along with Grandparents' Day this year. Today, we're honoring children and grandparents. Sunday, September 10th, 2017, we are honoring grandparents. So happy Grandparents Day to all the grandparents out there and to all the children and parents. I say to you, give honor to these men and women while they are alive. Grandparents Day history serves to honor and recognize the contributions of grandparents in our lives. Grandparents are a society and a family tied to its past as they pass on important values, beliefs, and ideas to future generation. And I'll repeat that. Grandparents are a society and a family tied to its path as they pass on important values, beliefs, and ideas to future generations. Their wisdom and love are recognized every year on the first Saturday after Labor Day in September. National Grandparents Day was founded by Jacob Rheingold and Marion McQueen or McQueed in 1961 during the White House Conference on Aging. Rheingold was inspired to focus on the role of grandparents in society and he subsequently held the first grandparent day at his retirement home later that year. By 1961, the New York borough of the Bronx had made Grandparents Day an official holiday. Then in 1970, Miss McQuaid began to petition for the government to proclaim a day for grandparents. In 1973, the first Grandparent Day was proclaimed in West Virginia, and in 1978, bill to proclaim National Grandparent Day was signed by President Jimmy Carter. According to President Carter, the elders of each family have the responsibility for setting the moral tone for the family and for passing on the traditional values of our nation to their children and grandchildren. And once again, I just want to say thank you to all the grandparents out there, including myself. Have a wonderful day. Again, you know, we're celebrating both Grandparents and Children's Day today and Grandparents Month. So we're going to stick with parenting. And today's topic, how can a parent find peace of mind? And we're coming from the RBC ministry um, publication the ones that write our daily bread. And this is written by Martin R. D. Hand II. 
Few experiences are more wonderful and difficult than raising children. Solomon recognized both sides when he said, a wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son is the grief of his mother, Proverbs 10 and 1. For this challenge, the Bible offers wisdom. Nowhere is there more realism than in the experiences of Abraham, Sarah, David, the father and mother of the prodigal son and others. Nowhere is there more understanding and comfort than in the father of heaven, who patiently loves and waits in the lives of his own grown children. Amen. Now we know being a parent is a wonderful but difficult challenge. Looking back, true grandparents will say that being a parent was easy. Many, however, will say that parenting has been the continual or continuous to be one of the most rewarding experiences of their lives. Others have said that knowing what they know now, they wouldn't have had children again. How do you feel about the subject? Some well-known surveys have shown that parental disillusionment is fairly widespread. Now, I'll put my two cents in. I haven't had the best experience raising children but I always wanted to have them and I thank God for them. And yes, I believe that would be the only thing I would do over again if I had a chance and that is to have children. But I, right now, I wouldn't have any more. Again, remember, I think I told you the story I wanted 12 kids and you know, I thank God I end up with Thank you, Jesus. Newspaper columns and radios and television talk programs continue to show that there are probably more than a smile behind the following bumper sticker. Happiness is spending your children's inheritance before they do. Success as a parent is living long enough to be a problem to your children. I don't know how you feel about those two sayings, but that's not me. I don't want to be a problem to my children. I don't want my children taking care of me because I see how they take care of themselves. Amen. Behind the humor, there is heartbreak, sleepless nights, and broken dreams. Nights, days, broken dreams, Tears, that's a mother's cry. Fathers get angry, want to fight, want to shout. Some have even killed their children during the 20th and 21st century, but I don't advise that. The tough part of this subject for any parent is that our children are so close to our hearts. Many of us will quickly acknowledge that nothing is as important as our children. More than a few moms and dads will say that nothing else matters if their children are not happy. Nothing else matters if a son or daughter is sick or hurt or afraid. Much of this parental concern is healthy. It goes with the territory of loving enough to care about your children. At some point, however, the care can also become unhealthy. And we must be mindful of that because we can make or break our children before they become adults. At some point, the worry over a difficult child can become consuming and a warning of a lost perspective. And at those times, we need to know when to let go and let God. 
holding on too long to a child can cause the child to rebel and do harmful things to themselves and to you at the same time. Because when, a, when you love your child that much, when they hurt, you're hurting. When they hurt themselves, you hurt even more. Does the Bible promise good results? One of the most quoted parent, parenting principles of the Bible is found in Proverbs 22 and 6. There Solomon, the wise king of Israel, said, Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. In the Hebrew language, this literally says that if you train up, initiate, consecrate, or dedicate a child in his own way with regard for his own temperament and individual needs at each stage of growth or development, when he is old, from a word that meant bid or mature, he will not depart from it. Some take this as a promise. Others believe it is a general rule of wisdom that expresses the amount of influence a parent has on an impressive child. But remember, that impression only last for a short period of time from the time the child is a babe until they get around eight or nine when they start identifying with their own friend. Amen. There is some truth in each view. At the very least, this proverb reflects that if you give a child a good beginning by training him, in a manner appropriate to his own distinct need. Then the positive influence of this early training will remain with him for the rest of his life. And I agree with this. And this is why we have so many young people who have been abused by parents, grow up to be abusive parents. Just saying, this is a positive message. It's not a negative message. Thank you, Lord. He will never be able to get away from what the parent has impressed on him. So it's either going to be positive or negative, my brothers and sisters. That doesn't mean the adult child will always comply with his parents' influence but he will carry the memory of their training with him until the day he dies. Overall, the Bible shows that a mature approach to parenting will follow the example of our Heavenly Father. He loved as no other parent has ever loved, while also giving his children enough room to make their own choices and mistakes. And we, as children of God must learn that and instill that in our children because again we have parents that believe just because they had that child that child belongs to them okay and they can do whatever they want to them they can keep them they don't have to let them go and the honest truth is God puts children in our lives so that we can help our children become the best that they can be. Now we're talking about parenting and I'm sorry, I'm sorry and I'm sad to say this, but I wanna hit every basis because we learn in the Bible that there are parents that sacrifice their children in the fire. Human sacrifice Illuminati, elite group for the world power, fame, and sex has been discovered. 
there's many celebrities that are in this particular occult group. And yet there are several different groups around. Human sacrifice ritual to pagan gods, Astoreth, Milcom, Chimor, Kali, Durga, and Molich, done by Queen, the royal family, Popes, Cameron, Presidents, and other Illuminati elite members. And I want you to keep that in mind, my brothers and sisters. Human blood sacrifice in the past and even today in the present. When people lose sight of God and begin to worship the planet, demons, hero gods, they practice horrifying acts of cruelty, obscenity, and perversion unnatural sexual acts, even sons and daughters were burnt in the fire in Leviticus 18.21, 2 Kings 3, 26-27, 16.3, 17.17, 31, 26. 31, excuse me, 21, 6, 23, 10 to 11, Second Chronicle, 28, 3, and 33, 6. Many of the ancient nations shed blood human blood before these deities. Molich means king. This was the name of the main god of Ammon called Chimot by the Mobites. I'm sure you've heard of that tribal group and we do know they were black. Try looking up biblical facts about false gods. Molich was worshipped in Egypt as Amun, A-M-U-N, or Amun-Ra, the king of gods. What was supposed to be his likeliness was a statue of brass resting on a pedestal or throne of brass. His head crowned with resembling that of a calf and his arms extended as if to embrace all who came near. Children were his victims. The status quo. The statue was heated red, hot by fire inside, and children were shaken over the flames or passed through the hot arm in dedication to it. To receive Molich favor, it was believed that all children not so dedicated would die in infancy. Many were actually burnt alive in the idol. The scriptures above. Read it. Also, it seemed like King Acid was dedicated to Molich, 2 Kings 16, 3, 19 through 20, 2 Chronicles 20, 28 and 3. According to the Bible, the following nine pagan practices are abomination to God. One, making children pass through the fire in worship to an idol God, Deuteronomy 8, 10, 2, using divination, 3, observing times, 
Four, enchantments. Five, witchcraft. Witches and wizards and sorcerers and warlocks. Six, using charms on others. Deuteronomy 18, 11. Seven, consulting familiar spirits or spirits of a de deceased. And we still finding that happening today, especially with the rich and the famous. Eight, consulting many mediums. Nine, practicing necromancy. Three commands, pagan practices. One, do not learn the abomination of pagans. Two, do not practice in it them even if you know them. Deuteronomy 18, 10 to 11 and 3. Be perfect with the Lord. Deuteronomy 18, 13 to 14. Even King Solomon worshiped them and now he is in hell due to his outright idolatry. 1 King 11 and 5. In addition to the national gods, Ashtara, Milcom, Chemos, and Molich, Solomon also favored other gods worshipped by various wives in 1 King 11 8, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. Finally, Solomon himself could not make it to heaven for idolatry, idol worshiping, worshiping devils, 1 Kings 11.10. So human sacrifice by the elite group recently, very briefly, in this 21st century, the degree of control exerted by the NWO has advanced to the point that only certain hand-picked individuals who are groomed and selected are even eligible to become the prime minister or president of countries like England, Germany, or the United States. The corporate portion of the NWO is dominated by the royal family of England, namely Queen Elizabeth II and the House of Windsor, and the powerful conspirators are made up largely of the international bankers and the Illuminati individuals and the super rich organizations which control the mainstream media, workforce, education system, companies, banks, energy supplies, and governments. They are controlled by the richest people in the world, such as the super rich Rothschild, and Rockefeller families. They also hide behind many organizations such as the United Nations, the WTO, and the Council on Foreign Relations. But brothers and sisters, today we're hearing more about the Illuminati. They seem to be coming out of hiding. So they are coming into their power. High level players and which control the upper stratus of the NWO. And I want you to do your research. Find out who these people are. There's plenty of information on the internet and magazines. You just have to dig them out. Amen. So which world order will you follow? Man or God? That's the bottom line. I was ending the video when the Holy Spirit said to me, for all those men and women in the Illuminati, in the cult and the cult, if you 
want to remove that generational curse from your line, your bloodline, to remove that spiritual curse from your children and your children's children. Only thing you have to do is ask God and Jesus Christ forgiveness, repent of your sins, turn your life over to God, and no demon in hell, not even the devil himself, can touch you. Jesus will cover you with the blood of Jesus. And no harm will be for you or your family member. Because as long as you're in that occult, you owe, you owe a blood sacrifice to the God you're worshiping now. Okay? Freedom with Jesus is forever. Yahshua paid the ultimate blood sacrifice by giving his life for you and me. Once and for all, no more is needed. Amen. This is Pastor Catherine signing out. Thank you for watching.